If you've ever listened to disc 5, you probably realized it isn't music. But nobody knows what it actually means. Disc 5 is Minecraft's greatest mystery ever, consisting of 200 unique sound effects spanning two different game universes. It's a mysterious story waiting to be pieced together, and today, I'm going to solve it. To uncover the meaning behind the disc and explore how it tells a dark and chilling story you don't want to miss. To make such a monumental task possible, it only makes sense to cut the disc up, just like in the game, and investigate each piece in turn. In my eyes, the disc is split into these three sections. The reason for these cuts will be obvious later, but for now, how this video is going to work is that I'll be recapping the audio from each of these three sections, overlaying actual audio from the disc as I describe it. After each section, I'll analyze what kind of story that mysterious audio is telling, and after analyzing every part of the disc, we'll piece together a final story and hopefully uncover the true meaning of disc 5. But for now, the disc opens with a whoosh, static, and a faint clicking in the background. This underlying clicking is already crucial to the disc's story. Disc 5 was added in 1.19, where it can be found broken into fragments scattered across the ancient city. I've already examined the lore of these cities and their inhabitants, but in short, these cities are deeply connected to the Warden and Skulk, so theoretically, disc 5 should be all about that stuff, and the clicking confirms it. You can map this sound to either the Skulk sensor clicking or the Warden clicking, which inconveniently share the same sound. We then get a click of a flint and steel and a bat sound effect indicating we're likely in a cave. We can hear walking on a surface that sounds like dripstone, a seemingly minute detail but one that will later be crucial to solving this mystery. The walking turns into marching and a siren-like noise blares in the background. We hear a sigh and then one of the most interesting sounds in the whole disc. The best way I can describe it is like a chime. Some say it's the reverse sound of putting Eyes of Ender in a portal frame, which sounds like this. And others say it's the reversed sound of collecting XP, which sounds like this. But regardless of what it really is, there's actually a place in the game where it exists. The end of a Skulk Shrieker. If you listen carefully to the shriek of a Shrieker, you can hear the same faint chimes at the end. This doesn't make them any easier to identify, but it does point us in an interesting direction we'll examine later. <laughs> This roaring noise is unlike anything else in the entire game, because it isn't from the game, it's from Minecraft Dungeons. This is the roar of an Ender Scent, a mob meant to guard the eyes of Ender in an underground environment which kind of resemble the deep dark but not enough to draw any parallels. It may seem odd or outright wrong that a mob from Minecraft Dungeons features in a Minecraft music disc, but it actually isn't so outlandish and is something that is essential to know to solve the disc's mystery. Section 1 then ends with a strangely peaceful melody that acts is a perfect transition point to start analyzing. We know that this section takes place in a cave with a dripstone floor. With the army walking and alarm horns, we could probably guess this is an established settlement and not some random search party. The chimes which we identify to play at the end of a Skulk Shrieker leads us to believe we are also in the deep dark. Piece together all that information and it's safe to assume we're in an ancient city. But that's when we hear the Ender Scent, a mob from Minecraft Dungeons. As far as I know, there are none of these in Minecraft, much less in the deep dark of all places. So why is it even there? What's the point in putting an ender scent where an ender scent obviously doesn't belong? Well, while Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft are two separate games, their universes are very connected. This is something that's been officially confirmed by the Minecraft developers themselves, you can hear it from them. Do the lores of Minecraft Dungeons have at least a single connection to the Minecraft lore? Yeah, tons of connections. They they belong to the same universe. They are deeply connected, but we don't make it so obvious. This video actually holds another piece of very subtle evidence that solidifies this connection. Mojang decided to split this video into five sections. The first is the intro, and the other four are the four questions of this Q&A. But none of those are the lore question we just saw. Each section is titled exactly after what it's about, except this last question about the lore is the only one without its own section, and you can probably guess which one it was placed in. Music. This question about Minecraft 
Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft sharing lore is intentionally placed in the music section of the Q&A, a small nudge towards Disc 5. Even more, Samuel Auberg, the creator of Music Disc 5, was almost exclusively a dungeon sound designer up until this point. So maybe you're now convinced the dungeon's connection is there and the Ender Scent is intentional, but what does it mean? In Minecraft Dungeons, the Ender Scent exists to guard the Eyes of Ender, but it has no connection to the Warden or Deep Dark. In fact, in Dungeons, there's no such thing as a Warden or a Deep Dark, so what does it mean? Where is this disc taking place where there's both Skulk and an Ender Scent? Something just doesn't line up. Until we look at Section 2. By identifying the bubbling of lava and walking on dripstone, it's safe to assume we are once again in a cave. We then hear what sounds like an amethyst cluster breaking, followed by what I think is a cave-in. Minecraft doesn't have any cave-in noises, but I couldn't map this sound to anything else. The amethyst cluster is a super odd detail, but one that we'll examine later and will also be pivotal to determining the disc's message. We hear a giant thud and more lava, followed by silverfish. We then hear phantom screeching, a flint and steel, and a voice saying secrets overlaying some woodwind noise I can't find a match for in game. We then immediately hear the sound of either sand or soul sand. We hear walking turn into running on dripstone, deep slate bricks, another soul sand noise, the faint click of a skulk sensor, and the noise of something. This noise doesn't belong to anything in the game and sounds like a giant contraption turning on. It's followed by this high-pitched whirring before this section of the disc ends. Again, by the dripstone and lava, we're probably underground. The amethyst cluster breaking is a very weird touch though. Typically, the presence of amethyst would put us in an amethyst geode, but why there of all places? Amethyst shards do naturally spawn in the chests of ancient cities, but also seemingly for no reason. It could be that they're tied in some way to the echo shards, which also don't seem to have any origin and look like amethyst shards coated in a layer of skulk. The cave-in is also something that isn't really found in Minecraft. The only potential cave-ins are gravel roofs falling or dripstone spikes falling. While there's no way to tell for sure what this cave-in is, something that may help us is that each biome has a unique soundtrack, and conveniently, the one that plays in dripstone caves is called Infinite Amethyst. So maybe that amethyst breaking and cave-in are just hints that we're in a dripstone cave. However, the silver Silverfish that play right after offer a completely different interpretation, but to tell you about that, step aside Minecraft Java and Minecraft Dungeons, it's time for a different universe crossover. Hello? Arguably an even more anticipated crossover than MCD and Java. Yep, but maybe not one that necessarily takes place in a dripstone cave. Silverfish can spawn in a few places, but perhaps none is more notable than the portal room of a stronghold. That would explain the lava, but doesn't explain the dripstone and amethyst. Well, another potential interpretation has to do with the mountains. Silverfish can spawn from infested blocks that generate in this list of biomes. And the deep dark conveniently also generates more frequently under large mountains, so the presence of silverfish could entail that someone is digging near a deep dark and just happens to find themselves in a dripstone cave with some infested blocks around. However, this is again contradicted by the phantoms. Phantoms can only spawn in open air, and if our character is in a dripstone cave heading down, then it would be weird to hear phantoms. Yet, yeah, there may be a solution to this conundrum. Perhaps our character is trying to escape a deep dark. We join him as he runs through a dripstone cave, trying to leave. As he nears the surface, we can hear the phantoms above. He could be leaving for the same reason we heard the sirens in the previous section. Something is happening in the deep dark something that he does not want to be around to see. It's also noteworthy that these phantoms sound like they're sampled from Minecraft Dungeons and not Java. In that game, phantoms spawn when your teammates die. The prevalence of phantoms could be hinting that a lot of death is happening in the ancient city. That's a good point. And you know what else is a good point? The fact that we're almost at 1.5 million subscribers, it would be great to reach that milestone by the end of the year, but I can't do it without the help of each and every one of you watching. So if you do end up enjoying the video, then please do consider subscribing. Also, if you want to discuss any of the lore, help out with new videos, or just hang around, then be sure to join the Discord, link in the description. But thanks, and let's get back into it. The voice which sounds like Agnes saying secrets and placing soul sand is a really weird touch and I don't know what to make of it. The character running on this variety of blocks and the noise of something powering up could be referencing the giant centerpiece of the ancient city activating as our character gets close to it. The skulk sensor clicking could be indicating that something has arrived, 
left, perhaps the warden. Again, it seems like a mess of noise, but if we follow all the breadcrumbs, it paints a picture. Our character is somewhere underground. He breaks an amethyst, causes a cave-in, and rushes up to the surface by a few silverfish. He hears phantoms in the distance, and all of a sudden sees something that makes him gasp. He runs back down to the deep dark, gets near the centerpiece, and a skulk sensor clicks, maybe confirming that whatever he saw is following him back down. Or maybe it's the sensors in the lights or under the statue confirming his location. But there's still the question of what's chasing him or what the amethyst shard has to do with anything or why there was even a cave-in in the first place. To answer that, we need to look at the final section, section 3. Section 3 picks up with a giant thud followed by some sort of whirring that progressively gets louder. The static overlaying this sound is potentially sampled from Minecraft Dungeons Endermen, another reference to the alternate game, but again, out of place. The thuds turn into booms as they get closer, and the static in the background is replaced with a deep rushing wind noise. Someone is walking on deep slate, and then faster on soul sand or sand. There's a weird scraping noise, and a noise that sounds like a giant mechanical working, or maybe the dragon dying. There's a rustle, and suddenly silence. Until we hear a noise like the magic chimes of the Minecraft dungeon's final boss, the vengeful heart of Ender. A skulk shrieker overlaying a warden, and silence only broken afterwards by a faint humming. As someone walks on deep slate, the humming gets louder and louder until a skulk sensor clicks, the warden screams, and we hear the faint noise of the withered death sound slow down. From then on, it sounds like everything is shutting off, and we end with some static and the occasional reversed bump of an enderman. The static we hear in the beginning is a bit odd, but the thuds that progressively get louder likely indicate that whatever was chasing our character in the previous section is catching up to him. This is likely a wither. It makes sense given what we know about Minecraft lore, and if you want more evidence, there's a video on the iCard and in the description. Our character, after being followed into the deep dark, is likely setting up the activation of this giant gate in the center. But why? Well, I'll let Retro fill us in on that one. Whoa, the budget has really gone down around here. Okay, can you just explain the frame in the center, please? Yes, of course. The frame in the center of the ancient city might not actually be a portal. Instead, I believe that it is an artificial skulk catalyst. There are a lot of things in the city that appear to be designed to lure a warden towards the center frame. For example, notice how there's a main pathway leading up to the center, as well as a bridge. When a player moves around on the platform, a warden is naturally going to be drawn to this area. The redstone lanterns act as warning lights for people up in the watchtowers. For more details, check out my video on the topic. But why would they risk the extreme danger of summoning a warden? The the answer is that the builders wanted as much soul energy as possible. While the soul fire and soul lanterns provide part of the required energy, a nearby warden would supply the final boost needed to activate the catalyst. All of this together powers a giant reaction, utilizing soul energy in a way that emulates a natural catalyst. It could be that the end goal of this ritual was to enchant items. To this point, we still don't know for sure how the builders enchanted things, as enchanting tables never spawn naturally. The catalyst offers a tempting explanation. There is evidence for this. The ancient cities have the highest chest density of enchanted books, and the highest level of enchanted tools in the game. But regardless of what the point of the ritual is, one of the best ways of getting soul energy from the warden is to have it kill something. It seems possible that the ancient builders could have been trying to lure a wither down to the deep dark in order to pump even more soul energy into their catalyst. The boom and silence we heard later on the audio indicates the wither has broken into the deep dark, but again something completely out of left field hits, the vengeful heart of Ender. This final boss of Minecraft Dungeons has really no business appearing in the deep dark, which begs the question of why in the world we hear its chimes. Now it's noteworthy that the sound match isn't identical, but this is the most similar sound I was able to find to whatever this noise was. Ignoring the chimes, we hear a skulk tendril click and the warden scream, indicating that the warden too has arrived. As we get closer to the frame, it continues to hum while the warden kills the wither, hinted at by the warden's scream and slow death sound. The static that plays at the end of the disc is the same ambience found in the soundtrack Ancestry, the only soundtrack of the deep dark bio, confirming this is the right location and the stories line up. But do they really? It seems that we have a clear story, just out of order. In section 2, our hero sees the wither on the surface, rushes back down to his deep dark, and alerts the sirens in section 1. The army comes out, and we jump to section 3 as the warden is summoned, the giant catalyst is turned on, and the warden kills the wither. Perhaps in some elaborate ritual to gain a ton of energy from the wither's death, or maybe just a test of defense mechanisms. But the stories don't line up. There are plenty of random references to Minecraft 
Minecraft dungeons, plenty of pieces that don't fit. The amethyst break, the cave-in, the dripstone floor, it's too complex, it's too abstract, there's way too much noise, it's like many stories being told at once. What if it is many at once? The only clear outlier we've noticed throughout this disc is the synthesis between Java and Dungeons, so what if that's it? What if the disc is telling two stories at once? Well, if we analyze the entire disc through this new lens, we uncover a completely different meaning. Disc 5 tells the story of a player in Minecraft Dungeons and a player in Minecraft Java at the same time. Section 2 marks the beginning. Our player in Minecraft is walking on the surface of a dripstone cave. He hears phantoms and all of a sudden sees a wither. He gasps and begins to run back down to the ancient city below him. He lights the soul sand beneath a giant frame and prepares for the ritual. Meanwhile, in section in 2, there's another story being told in dungeons. This time, our player is searching for a stronghold in order to eliminate the final boss, the vengeful heart of Ender. He also hears phantoms. As his comrades are dying, he needs to be quick. But as he gets to the portal, he realizes he needs eyes of Ender, and for that, he needs to find the Ender Sense. Section 1 continues the Minecraft story as our hero in the ancient city turns on the alarm. A wither is coming. The army begins to march out in preparation as booms echo throughout the ancient city. The wither is getting close. The chimes that play at the end of the Shriekers indicate that a bunch of Shriekers have just activated. The Warden is being summoned to fight the Wither and continue the ritual. Our player in Dungeons, meanwhile, is backtracking through the Dripstone Cave to find the Eyes of Ender. This explains why the army footsteps don't replace the player walking, but are actually layered on top of it, indicating that it really is two stories at once. In Dungeons lore, the Eyes of Ender necessary to fight the Heart of Ender are guarded by six Ender sent all around the world, and our player has just found one emphasized by its snarl. Finally, Section 3 comes last. The Wither Thuds are getting closer, louder and louder. Our player pillars up to the centerpiece and turns it on, ready to start the ritual, about to use the Warden to kill the Wither and power the artificial catalyst. The final Shrieker powers on and the Warden screams. It has arrived. The machine hums louder and louder as the Warden fights, and finally the Warden kills the Wither in a giant burst of energy, powering the centerpiece statue. Everything shuts down while our character in dungeons gets to the end as hinted by the static and manages to kill the vengeful heart of Ender, but in the process trapping himself in the end, resulting in the final static sound effect found in both the Deep Dark soundtrack and Minecraft Dungeons Enderman. And the story ends. So, is that really the story of Disc 5? It could be, it very well might not be, but if nothing else, it's a really cool story that acts as the perfect way to begin crossing over the universes of Minecraft and Dungeons. But there's one more piece of the puzzle I haven't addressed yet. One piece that could be pivotal to understanding the disc's strangest sounds, like the amethyst and the dripstone floor. And if you want to hear all about the insane world of the dripstone theory that might just solve everything, click this video on the left. If you want to see more crossing over of universes and another potential interpretation of the disc story, check out Retro's video on the right. And again, if you want to talk about the lore or just hang around, feel free to join the Discord a link in the description. But thank you so much for watching, peace out, and have a good one. I'll see you next time.